Hey there, all right, now in this section, digital sculpting, we wanna look at this idea of what it takes to move the needle as a digital sculptor, what it takes to show people that you can do the work. Because the first thing that people think about is anatomy, all right? And then that's a year, two years of your life before you kind of figure it out, you know, that, that you kind of get your handle on it and you also sense that it's not as important as some of the other things. So then you go and you learn something like Marvelous Designer and you kind of you keep spinning through all of these elements. But what I want to do and what we do in the boot camp is we give you a framework that explains what's important, how you need to be focused on it, how much you need to be focused on it, and what you can do that really moves the needle to show that you can do the work. Not that you are a ma grand master uh, jam of Marvelous Designer and ZBrush and Maya and Substance Painter, and all, but that you, are, you can do this job. And in fact, you have done this job because you created a character. So one of the key things we do with digital sculpting, primarily we focus on this idea of software sophistication because a lot of people think that in order for me to be a digital sculptor, I got to use ZBrush. And ZBrush is so sexy, it's so beautiful, it's just an amazing, wonderful experience. So ZBrush is the conduit for a lot of people. Now, and if you're looking at my screen here, this is Muhammad's model, and he's done this inside of the Character Artist Bootcamp over at Game Art Institute, okay, the one that you're looking at. And this model, if you look at it, you might think, oh man, did he do all of this inside of ZBrush? And the number one thing I want to communicate to you is absolutely not. All right, there's multiple pieces of software and he learned to use ZBrush for what it was good at. And for what it's good at is making about 120 million polygon model. This is literally taking up 35, 34 gigs of my machine right now as I talk. This thing is, is working it, right? We hover over this and it says 141,220,096 polygons, all right? But what he did was do the right thing at each step. And so to give you a bit of an illustration on this, let's pop over to Artist Awake and let's take a look at Corey Mollohan's work. And Corey went through a similar process. So here you can see he's starting this character out this night. And if you zoom up to what it ultimately became, let's go all the way up to what it was, it's this beautiful piece of rendering and, and work and development. It took him a long time and it looks like it's, he's really spent a lot of time on it. So this from here, the first thing he did was try ZBrush and extraction. That's the first thing that we would think of. We're in ZBrush, we're sculpting the body, the face, let's try extraction, all right? And it's not quite working, so he tries to play with it a little bit more. He tries to use the polish brush to get things to work. And then finally we make the decision it's not going to happen, all right? You got to use the right tool, and the right tool is not ZBrush in this case. Not to say that it can't be, but look, the job that you're getting paid for isn't to use ZBrush, it's to use the right tool. So look around, what are people using in pipelines? What are they talking about when they do their talks? What are they teaching about when they teach their gum roads? Get that stuff and use what they're using. Don't worry about the new nifty gadgets. And as soon as he shifted, and he did all of this work inside of Maya. It was a period of about three days. Now suddenly we're going somewhere with the armor in the upper body. Okay, and then it's a couple more days later that this really just starts to sing. He starts to get the rivets in there, starts to get the scent and the, and the trim on it all starts to come together. He gets the plates in. Everything starts to develop the itness. It starts to look like armor. And that's the first fundamental thing we need to tackle. What you're sculpting, does it look like what it's supposed to be? Does it have the material qualities? Because if it doesn't have the material qualities, we don't pass go, we don't collect $200, we don't get that job, all right? We don't. Because, look, these companies have to hire people to produce work so that they can present it out to the public and they can sell their game and they can generate revenue that employs thousands of people. It doesn't matter if, hey, I know ZBrush, I can do this extraction, I know this feature, I know that feature, none of that is relevant. The people who are looking at your portfolio, who are looking and searching online right now, this very second, the people that are searching online for somebody to take a job, those people are HR people. They, I, they don't know the ins and outs of ZBrush. How could they? 
They're just looking for somebody who has created armor that looks like armor that might fit the world in which they're creating. All right. And if we're looking here in Corey's first round on this, it looks like he knows ZBrush doesn't look like armor. And that's one of the mental shifts that we need to make. It's not about being a good student. It's about being a freaking artist. All right. And it's so important when we're talking about this in digital sculpting is it doesn't matter that you're learning. It matters what you're demonstrating. And I get that that's not, a ni not necessarily the nicest thing to hear. I totally understand that. But it is the nicest thing I can say to you because that's what's going to get you the job. It's not all the learning. It's not the fact that you're studying anatomy. It's none of that. Okay? They're not going to take chances on people. They already have and it doesn't work out. They want, to sh they want to know that you can do this and you do that. You give them that certainty by doing it. Corey gives that certainty. He has done the work. It's here. I am certain that he can do this work now. If we look at Muhammad, Muhammad has demonstrated with certainty that he can do this work that it is there and ready and all we need to do is hire him and say this looks good can you do that right that's what we want to do is we want to put out into the world these little calling cards that we can achieve this and one of the things that's key to the way in which Muhammad worked and it's core to everything we do in the boot camp is making sure that you are just you are telegraphing software sophistication that you are telegraphing that you understand itness, that you understand that your job is to sculpt armor to look like armor. It needs to look like metal. It doesn't, it, you don't want it to look like you sculpted it in ZBrush. You don't want it to look like a maquette. You don't want it to look like you know, you're, you're doing a sketch. Armor. That looks like armor. So use the right tool for the job. And in this case, the right tool was Maya. It was Maya for Corey. It was Maya for Mohammed. So if we go back over here into ZBrush, I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to turn them all to low. <laughs> just going to take a moment because this is a 140 million polygon model. But then you'll see the low res that he created. And it's not about proper topology. It's, not about, it's just about telegraphing that you understand the simple processes that you need to do. Let's zoom in and take a look at just that breastplate. And I'm going to turn polyframe on. Not crazy topology, right? Nothing extraordinary. But because he did this in Maya, he was able to get the clean flow and the proper boundaries and, and just the curvature that he really needed to achieve. He was able to get that, and then once he had it, he was able to take that all the way into ZBrush and then give it everything he had. Let's just take this one piece up in subdivision levels and turn the polyframe off. Look at that. And he was able to give it the engraved quality using the tools that are inside of ZBrush. So he used the right tools for the right job. He used Maya to establish the base to give him the proper curvature. He used ZBrush to establish the alphas, the stencil, the engraving in there. And then if you look over here in his, uh, in his page, then he's using Substance Painter to paint this and to give this a really beautiful quality to the render, right? And that's what we're looking for, is to telegraph to people that we are sophisticated in the tools that we use. Because you've got to remember, they're tired. They're looking at 300, 400, 500 portfolios for one job offer. That's a lot of work, right? So what you want to do, because you've got you to know this, right? You've got to be valuable to the people that you want to employ you. And your first step in being valuable is make the job easy for them. Make the job of finding you easy. And you do that by making sure that you're showing high quality work and that the work that you're showing isn't just, I'm interested in this. It's what they're interested in. And it shows that you can do the job they need to do. So make sure that you demonstrate don't write it in your, just demonstrate it, I know Maya, right? And you do that by really having this clean form. 
demonstrate that you know ZBrush by going in and getting the details established, by adding these extra wrinkles and folds, right? By adding the proper damage to something or the engravings as Mohammed did. All right. Demonstrate that you know Marvelous Designer because Mohammed didn't just do Maya. Mohammed also did, if we go over here to hit Marvelous Designer, he did this whole guy here in Marvelous Designer. So all of this work is sitting here in Marvelous Designer done. And if we were to, say, get rid of this padded jacket for a moment, one of the mistakes a lot of people make is they try to do clothing or pants things like that. They try to do these pants inside of ZBrush because I don't want to buy Marvelous Designer, because I don't want to get the trial, because at the end of the day, I'm not taking this serious enough. All right, and that's something we stress in this boot camp. Yes, I would love for you to be able to do this inside of ZBrush. It's not the way, all right? It's just not. I know some of the best people out there doing this work. One of the artists that teaches a course here is one of literally the best drapery sculptor I've ever known. It's taken him years to learn how to do this. It takes somebody weeks to develop proficiency in this software. And once you develop proficiency in this software, you can quickly, rapidly create realistic results. It doesn't mean it's perfect. It doesn't mean it's the final thing that goes in the game. It does mean it's the base. And this is what's key. You establish something that looks realistic, that looks like it. It looks like clothing actually falling. It doesn't look like silk, it looks like denim. It doesn't look like denim, it looks like cloth, or it looks like it's a thick leather. You gotta learn the system inside of Marvelous to understand you know, how to inflate things or how to establish the proper kind of folding, whether something's going to be really wrinkly or not wrinkly. So that's all we've gotta do inside of Marvelous is just get in there and start to understand a little bit about how the material is affected by us using weft and waft and, and all of the different features and sliders and settings inside there. But when we do this, we telegraph to the world that we are sophisticated in our choices of software and not only can we, in terms of the skills, can we do this, but in terms of the tool set that we bring, we have something to contribute to your pipeline. And not only that, but we're at the cutting edge. Because you have to remember one other thing. If you're new to this, and you're thinking, how can I get into this industry? There's so many people out there that are more skilled than me. You're forgetting one thing. And that's that there is new software coming out all the time. And the guys that have been in the game for a long time, they're gonna get tired at some point. The one thing that new people have going for them, they don't have all the experience, they don't have the pipeline, they don't have the portfolio, but the thing that new people have going for them is that they're learning the latest software. And that it takes time to learn the latest software. So all of these releases, this technology, it doesn't put us all on the same, same level but it certainly equalizes it. It's not the same, but you know, it's getting there closer together. So you're not as far behind as you think because you're starting out with the freshest tools, the most up-to-date mindset on this and the most up-to-date framework. And that's what you want. You want to be using and thinking about this, not just coming in from a perspective of let me use ZBrush, but from a perspective of let me use the tools that are going to make a difference. So Muhammad is working in all of these different pieces of software. My Marvelous Designer, ZBrush, Maya, right? And then also in Substance Painter and Marmoset and all these other things, which are all part of the boot camp. But here, our job with Muhammad was to make sure that he was walking through the steps and he was demonstrating to the world that he knew what it took to do this work. And not only that, but he has done it as you will do it when you join the boot camp. You will go through this process, you will not think you can do it, but you will spend more time on it, and then by week four, week five, you'll hit the dip, you'll get over the dip, and then suddenly start growing. And that's when amazing things happen. That's the stuff that really empowers me and makes me excited to teach, to see people kind of get through that thing that has been stopping them and reach the other side. Because here, don't forget this for a second. 
there's a lot of digital sculptors out there. There's not a lot of character artists out there. Because the dip from being just a digital sculptor to being a character artist is all the software you got to deal with in between. Getting yourself into Marvelous Designer, getting yourself into Maya and making sure you're familiar with all of that. Dealing with the topology, the UVs, baking things down. So if you're ready to become a character artist, then you just got to know this is what's in store for you. And look forward to experiencing this, to going beyond just ZBrush and getting yourself into not just sketches, but actually sculpting it and the itness of objects. And when you do that, man, that's, that's, the, that's the game. That's the game that gets you hired. That's the game you are here to play, all right? So I hope you learned something about this. Thank you, Muhammad, for uh, allowing me to show your work and Corey for allowing me to show your work. Really great stuff, guys. I'm excited and really proud to have you in the boot camp. And for everybody else, make sure that you apply to the boot camp today. Apply for a conversation. It's a 15 minute conversation and 15 minutes can save you years, period. End of discussion, all right? Don't do this alone. Apply for the conversation so that we can get together, figure this out, if this is a fit, if this is not a fit, or how you can think about moving forward. All right, I look forward to having a conversation with you. Talk to you soon.